It's a matter of importance to me That you be lucid and aware of what you're able to be Since I was able to see the lack of limits I've been infinite and this is indiscriminate Is it narcissistic? Arson isn't always meant to be destructive It's an art form This is my attempt to start the five that makes you art more And logic less Cause logic sense the dollar has been off of it I'm offering a sentence that could bring you back to sanity Empathic but emphatically I plan to see you mastering the art of your existence So that everyone can benefit Then on and on and fractally it blossoms into everything And mindfully we intervene I can create reality I used to hate this word but now I know its definition And I've learned to trust my family I see all seven billion So I deem it time to TNT you all with my opinion And I pray to my creators that just one of you will listen Cause the light and divine truth was always inside you I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you You travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth Illusion divides you But you are the limitless find through Which everything vibes through And I'm here to remind you that you are the light and divine truth It's always inside you I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you You travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to Invent and define truth Illusion divides you But you are the limitless vibe through Which everything vibes through And I'm here to remind you that you are I am the Illuminati of my own reality I am not afraid of those who benefit from apathy I am not a slave to any entity or anything My mission as a cell is reconnecting us with everything Inevitably, everything is bound to evolve Cause that's the nature of the fractal that we're also involved with Revolving around a nucleus that nuclearly powers us But I've comprised the theory that suggests we really power it Power is the act of understanding what you're standing on This is not the planet I was born from Though the Mastodon is part of me I'm partially a particle lost Time and space, but I remember when they're blasting me off and I am everything Free from the pendulum, I may never be But I control my darkness just enough to make a friend of it Addendumless, my Bible is remembering the ultimate Then every channel verse is holy text because we come from it And every son and daughter is my bleeding heart and counterpart So I will find the others and remind them that we have heart You're part of God whenever you remember And I'm sure now endeavoring forever on the quest of showing more How the light and divine truth was always inside you I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you You travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vibe through Which everything vibes through I need only remind you that you are the light and divine truth It's always inside you I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you You travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vibe through which everything vibes through and I'm here to remind you that you are God I'm here to remind you that you are the light and divine truth it's always inside you and I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you you travel through time to arrive at this line and now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth I need only remind you that you are God I'm here to remind you that you are God. I'm only here to remind you that you are a magical turtle. Magical turtle? That's pretty good. Hey, yo, magical turtles. I am. Zachary Winchester, and I am broadcasting live here from beautiful East Lansing, Michigan. Yes, that is the area uh, in which those who attend Michigan State University tend to dwell and stomp about. And I am here now in this dilapidated co-op building where many drugs are done and many twelfthsomes occur, and it's just a place of sin and debauchery, and my co-host is here from I'm here from, from, from the mountains of uh of Orthank which is actually That's a place in Middle Earth the tower of Orthank uh, broadcasting live from the tower of Orthank hello good how good. are you today i am very good very very good now that's that seemed like bullshit 
Hmm. That seemed like you just wanted to get okay. an answer out, and the acceptable one was to say you're very good. Okay, I will get a different answer then. Are you exceptional? I, I am using my hand to grab this pillow and uh, put it in the left side so it doesn't bother me as much. Good answer? Yeah, I've been thinking about the Google Glass, man. Have you seen that? They're starting to sell that. The Google Glass, it's like this... this uh, like glasses in a way, but there's only uh, there's only one little little married. I mean, I, mean whew, I just did a weird thing with my brain. There's there's this one little piece of glass that goes over your eye, and then you 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 can use the computorium. I, I know what they are. Be at that. But uh, you know the the hologram is too little. You need to have the glasses fully hologrammable. That is the way it should go. And you know, just uh, have exists. full full holograms. And when you want to scan some uh, girl, you just uh, program the glasses to see through the to the fabric. Exactly, man. I always, whenever I think about any kind of uh, artificial intelligence or virtual reality stuff, my mind immediately goes to porn and masturbation. Um, I suppose we could do more substantive things with it. But, you know, let's be honest, who really gives a fuck uh, about safe? We can safe also work? rob a bank and see exactly where they keep the safes and uh, the security points that we, need, that we need to bypass, you know, stuff like that. Exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, d- the refractory period, that is the time when you can have time to, uh, to think about anything but... The, do you hear about the, the you were, we were just talking about metal the, the fellow from Slayer died via spider spider bite from a, a fucking flesh eating tissue wound from a goddamn arachnid how metal is that I mean rest in peace by all means I, even though I, I don't usually like that concept of rest in peace or, but uh but uh yeah fella the, the guitarist of Slayer died via spider bite very good band. I recommend it to all the children in your uh, in your uh, recent vicinity. Yes, yeah, and the old people that. should listen to it. They have very smart uh, lyrics that can actually bring solutions to humankind. You really think that? I need to look into Slayer, man. Yes, I haven't actually. I've, I've seen Slayer live several times, but I never sat and tried to to pick apart the metaphorical substance of the lyrics. A I lot just, of a lot of interesting things that we must let me see now. Slayer lyrics. What song should be should we pick here? Blue yeah, I want to pick it up because uh, you know the, the Westboro Baptist Church are planning to protest his funeral. Not that. Okay, so here are some lyrics from the band Slayer. Peaceful confrontation, meet war machine, seizing all civil liberties, honest. Allotation among Banshee, spilling blood throughout humanity. You cannot hide the face of death. Oppression ruled by bloodshed. No disguise can deface evil. The massacre of innocent people. Divided, deviated lies. Fear blinding on your eyes. Enforcing their truth through a gun, aggressive disciple, and barbaric control. Thousands of people cannot be wrong. And it continues. So can you see? The lyrics are very, are very dense. Yeah, you have a lot of lyrical freedom when it comes to... to <laughs> Find the children. Pick them the basement to us you will. With my child. Because you... uh yeah, I mean you can you can really just uh, you can just take old paragraph rants and then just put them to the music. I'm not I'm not knocking a metal at all, but I've always I've always want I want to write a metal song myself because I would just. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's just, do that. We can do it. But I am not very should. skilled with the guitar that much. But I can do something similar, in like drop D chord, uh, uh, and make it similar to what metal does, but not so fast. We can do some kind of a remix. And put the interesting lyrics such as this. You know. Such as, I'm going to find you in the woods and show you how to die. Fuck your entire family. I'm going to write your lineage. 
Let's see what other interesting lyrics I, I found here uh, in the song called Hell Awaits. You know, existing on domination's edge, the priest had never known to witness such a violent show of power overthrown. Angels fighting aimlessly, shield dying by the sword, no steel by uh, our legions killing all in sight to get the one called Lord. So that they basically attack, attack, uh, attack God or something here. That sends salamanders down my spine. Bro. Crucify the Lord, he soon shall fall to me. Your souls are damned, your God has fell. To slave for me eternally. See? Yeah. What do you think about fairies, bro? Do you think that fairies exist? Yes, and they they have pink. They are pink, and they have dildos. They have a lot of fun with the dildos. Now, have you seen the silly, the, the like the the police evidence photo of the fairy that lives under the garden? It's it it's enough that if you're a complete ridiculous person, you totally believe it. I just did for a second. I well, I think I qualify. But look at that. It's like, that. That's a fairy. The police evidence of the do fairies live at the bottom of your garden? You know what I think? Like, I was just, I saw the Mars rover footage today. Uh, and it made me, well, I saw a photograph that I was just like, you know, I don't have any empirical data for this. I have, I have not, no objective data whatsoever for why I'm so certain just from this photo there was life there at some point. It looks like it. It makes my brain do a telepathic thing where I just say, something was walking around there, for sure, clearly. Look at it. Look at the stunning Mars panorama caption captures the Curiosity rover at work. Even the most lumpen amongst us can feel the overwhelming visceral certainty that there was life on Mars. No. And there will be again. There is not any life. There was only, only, only darkness. Microbacteria. Well, they know they're saying that uh, that that they concluded that there was lo- there was the, you know, the the conditions that could sustain life billions of years ago, which, uh, you know, it's not very relevant now, I suppose. And we've got Prajna here. What do you want to add? Prajna. I oh, I just want to muscle in and see if you wanted any calls and things like that, because I can spam it all in the IRC. It hurts everyone's eyes at the moment Okay. when I tell them they can call in. Tell them they can call in. Yeah, so let's, 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 let's see. I'd love to take a question. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, like, uh, feeling like answering some, some ridiculous ones. Maybe somebody will try to get substance and intellectual honesty out of us, and we'll just completely stonewall them. Let's do it. The ultimate knowledge. We possess it. And now I have a picture here uh, that appears to be taken by the Mars rover and the, it will enlighten the people in the chat room. Yes. Check this out. Good. All right. Zach. Yes. What are you doing? What am I doing? I am currently standing on my face. I'm doing a face stand and shouting at the harvest. I ate at a restaurant this morning called the Golden Harvest. It took us two hours to get inside. I'm not complaining. The food was very good and the line experience was wonderful. I won my place in line in a match of rock, paper, scissors with a stranger. Hmm. It was wonderful. And then I had a large, what was called the chronic omelette. It's a hippie establishment. It was very good, and there was loud dubstep music playing inside of the restaurant. And there were ah. elderly people and their children, and very loud, obnoxious dubstep. dubstep. They were doing the dubstep. Do 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 the dubstep. We're going to take a call. Seems legit. I do not know. I will do the dubstep in the woods. I would do I the dubstep. I have a complaint. Okay. Sorry, it's Callie here. I have a complaint. You can't have dubstep without wub, 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 wub in it. Oh, things have changed. Oh, <laughs> 
do the dubstep. Do the dubstep. Yeah, somebody asked me today uh, what make uh, while we were in that while we were in that restaurant. My friend asked of the older generation, fucking twenty eight, <laughs> the before dubstep existed when pterodactyls roamed the earth. There's a human out there. Um, he asked me uh, how does one define dubstep, and uh, I think I gave him a pretty shitty answer. Uh, Vasto, how would you define the genre of dubstep? What sets it apart? All right. Well, it comes. It stems off the the reggae culture, and basically, it took away the bass line and the, the tempo and recreated it with effects, electronic effects. Later on, it uh, some guy from America came and made it all more a little more complex, you know, because back then it was more about uh, setting a, a chill out type of uh, mood, but with a certain da- darkness attached to it. And uh, now it became uh, more complex uh, as the years go by, more effects are added, and um, it was all about exploring the sub bass and the bass, the low frequencies of the oscillators and the filters. And now it's uh, it has introduced the high frequencies as well, and it's an exploration of all electronic frequencies and basically it's uh, it uh, entwines all the synthesis together in one single genre of improvisation mm. my definition is an audio blood orgy or that yes but that uh, that was uh, that that is the summary of what uh, what uh, you just uh, said there um Instead of just a complaint, can I have any kind of inquiry? Because I I feel so ready to 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 embark on on something that was not chosen by myself. Because right now, all I want to talk about is like the vast, expansive, ever growing, ever complexifying nature of the multiverse. Even the most lumpen amongst us can feel the tug of the transformative and. The transcendental. You can talk about the the DMTs and the origin of thought. Do you listen to or watch a lot of Terence McKenna or read <laughs> literature? Yes, yes, I have listened to some Terence McKenna and they, his his uh, theory on the evolution of the human based on uh, monkeys ingurgitating uh, uh, the mushroom, and you know. Did you just say gurgitating? Ingurgitating, yes. I that is what is extremely fascinating about your linguistic choices, Mister Sir, because no fucking American that I ever encounter says ingurgitate under any circumstances ever. <laughs> but I will say I am more or less obsessed with. The thoughts and voice of one Terence McKenna. I do, I would almost say, subscribe to the stoned ape theory because it applies to myself. I am walking data that there is a certain evolutionary boost that occurs in a human mind when it ingests the fungus of the gods. When I was 14 years old, I took psilocybin mushrooms for the first time, and the rest is history. Not to say that the psychedelics in and of themselves are uh, an enlightening thing, or that I am by any standard God-enlightened, but, uh, but I think that there are certain realizations, certain visceral beams of thought tangents that occur... When one sits alone in silent darkness on dried fried grams of the of the psilocybin mushrooms, and I do not advocate the use of any drug, but I do espouse that it worked for me, and I think that it could work for you. Yeah, I'm pretty much advocating that everyone at some point try psilocybin and DMT. I think it's very important. Yes, I have tried. I have tried LSD, but it is totally just different. Like, just like Terence McKenna. 
just just like him. Yeah. It was remarkable. It was him. What it actually is the the reincarnated, re resurrected soul of one Terence McKenna speaking through the vessel of the magical turtle. And uh, I feel that, that all of us know that we are doomed to our own artistic taste and those whose whose spectrum of enjoyment the, the summoning of nonsense lands within that scale, those people are inherently fucked to have to listen to this nonsense for the rest of all existence. Yeah, I like to do that. Uh, I like to hide in corners sometimes around when I know that I'm amongst a bunch of people who know that, who recognize that voice. So I'm like, I'm not visible, and then just go into it and start saying some of my favorite quotes and stuff, and then <laughs> look around like, is Terrence McKenna in the room? Is just the ghost of Terrence McKenna. <laughs> he has a very particular way of saying the things. He's so funny, man. There's like he's he is funnier than any comedian that had, who is intentionally trying to be funny. Like really, I uh, you know I, I I'd say my favorite stand up right now is uh, Doug Stanhope, Louis C.K. and <laughs> uh, I and Terrence McKenna, man. I when I watch a Terrence McKenna lecture, I laugh deeply. I don't just laugh like oh he just said a funny dick joke thing. Like he makes my brain explode with holy shit that this is ridiculous. Not just what he said is ridiculous. This. This whole human enterprise is absurd. What the fuck are we doing here? He's just, he's, he's so good at it. And uh, have you seen his final Earthbound interview? I have not seen, but maybe oh, Prashna that's, has. That's that, they have that on YouTube, and it's, it's actually like an HD, and it's in the forest. And man, he just, he goes the fuck in, for lack of better words, about evolution and... You know what is what is to become of the human enterprise that we are on the brink of becoming unrecognizable to ourselves, the singularity, if you will. It's it's really it's it's one of those things like I was saying about seeing the the the, the Mars footage and being like ah there was light there I can just see it just looks it just looks like a thing that triggers in my brain something was walking around there at some point like. He he says many things in in that final Earthbound interview that are just like undeniable just by how fiercely they resonate. My brain does the my brain does the dubstep when I hear him talk about the singularity. I can feel my brain doing the dubstep, and that and Terence McKenna was pre people doing the dubstep. Terence McKenna never did the dubstep, you know. Yes, he did. When he strips, I think he did. You know, like. Um, are you guys watching? In the IRC chat, because Dave in there says, are these guys live? And then <laughs> says, yeah, Dave. And I said, about as live as can be. What do you want them to say? I have the power to make them say it. And do you know what he said? Nonsense. <laughs> I said, this is called summoning the nonsense for fact's sake. Oh, is your mother listening? So. And utter malarkey. Absolute, pure unadulterated stupidity. Uh, there's a question. There's a question in IRC, I, IRC for Zach. It says, Zach, did you eat your food in school or one of the American, um, one of America's food trees? If you do know, what? If yes, <laughs> if do I, you now freak? If, if you your food freak. touches... The question is, did I eat food in my place of education? I don't understand the question fully. Ah, uh, did you have one of those trays that divided the, the portions of food so that nothing touched? And if yes, do you freak now if your food touches? Uh, oh, okay. Oh, no, I will, I will, I will answer this. Um, we had a single tray that one would select food items and place it on the tray and eat them, you know, in, in whatever order they please. They were not, they were not separated. Um, but I used to just on my own neuroses freak the fuck out when, uh, the, you know, the, any kind of marinara sauce infected the mashed potatoes, you know, if there was any kind of a situation where there was a liquid that, that spilled into the hash browns, or something like that. I, that was just a natural thing to freak out. But these days, I am a goulash man. Goulash. I, 
I I do I do the goulash. I do I I my the meals that I create Slavic food are dubstep. I I make dubstep meals. When I make a, when I make a pasta or a salad or any kind of a, 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 a noodle meal or any kind or a stir fry, it is absolute dubstep. It is ridiculous. It, I take all of the the body items and I mash them together and I stir them about and I and I and I eat them all as one. So the answer to that is quite the opposite. I was not forced in school to divide my things. I just had a neurotic problem, and now these days. I have the exact opposite neuroses, which is all, mash all of the things, stir all of the things. I want all of the things, you know. And I think that that is a that is somewhat of a of a fractal metaphor for the way I choose to live my life now, as opposed to then. I climbed a tree yesterday, and when I was dangling from the metaphorical dendrites of the mother brain, I got really, really scared. I was like, holy shit, this, it was, it was higher up in a tree than I've ever been. And I was like, my god, I don't know. I didn't know how I was getting down from it, and I had this this in, intense. I haven't been so afraid in a long time, and I'm not a heights. I, everybody hears heights because <laughs> you know, you fall, you shatter your bones and die. You know, I can fly though. But uh, I, I suppose you said some kind of uh, of uh, something. Then you entered the meditation, and then you were able to go down, or did you just jump four meters, or did you scream? Help! What did you uh, do? I I got down from the tree as as f it, it was about as far from graceful as it could have been, and I hurt my arm getting down. I took a blood oath the other day. It, I suppose I should I should address that. Uh, I took a blood oath the other day for the Facebook Reduction Act of 2013 uh, that stipulates that I am only allowed to use Facebook which I admittedly have an addiction to. I have an addiction to social networking. Facebook just happens to be the one, the place where everybody is now, so it's the thing that I use because I have, I have, a, I, have I wouldn't even call it an addiction to communication because addiction has a negative connotation. I would say that I have an addiction to Facebook because Facebook sometimes can be a negative thing if abused. But I have a, I have a straight up addiction to communicating with other brain minds. I, want, I need to do it constantly. If, if I don't, then I start, I, I mean, I, I do a lot of soliloquy, and, and it's not enough to talk to oneself, but I, I do that quite a bit as well. I'm just constantly flapping at them. I sleep. Everybody, I sleep a large amount of my life. I am rather, I actually talk in my sleep as well. Sleeping is good. Dreaming is good, in my opinion. Thoughts I have the, one, the most exploration dreams I, I have are uh, with... Uh, are undescribable and it is much more interesting than the reality in my opinion we should definitely create virtual realities similarly to a dream sort of algorithm yep absolutely i do agree i do agree thoroughly i've been having dreams lately that seem so uh they seem uh, like they have uh, more of a root in psychotherapy than in any kind of Intergalactic. Well, those things are one and the same. But uh, I, I've lately I've been having things that seem to be addressing issues. Like I can wake up and I can make the connection. Now, whether or not that is uh, that is the case, or if that's just so me having a Mars rover hallucination. Psychoanalyze yourself. Because, like, with Ellie was saying, with the fairies and the Mars rover and all things of that sort, sometimes I'll get like this really intense, visceral feeling of "Holy God, I know this resonates in my brain right now. This is true." And whether or not there's an actual tel telepathic thing going on there, or whether or not I'm just a silly hippie hallucinating, I, I don't even think it really matters as long as one concludes. You know, I would like to to be so, at least in my brain more of a conclusionist these days. More just, uh, you know, I would like to, you know, make a hypothesis and then live by it instead of just sitting and, and, and thinking about it the entire time. I mean, I'm always going to analyze oh. things no matter what, but, but it's time to do. It's time to start doing the stuff with the things. And hence the blood oath. I am now no longer allowed to use the space book between the days of uh, Monday and Saturday. I can only go on on Sunday when we have our show. This is the only time I'm allowed to use it. And this will this will make me spend a lot more time in the third dimension with uh, the real live magical turtles. Not to suggest that you aren't real, 
but uh, you know, we we can't run the hilly pine trails of the forest together. We can't taste the sun sweet berries of the earth, you know, in in the third dimension. Hmm. We can't roll in all the riches all around us and for once never wonder what it's worth. How high can the sycamore grow? If you cut it down, then you'll never know, magical turtles, and you'll never hear the wolf cry to the blue corn moon. Or whether you are white or copper skinned, you need to sing with all the voices of the mountains. You need to paint with all the colors of the wind. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> yes, but some some kind of people will will actually make sense out of that and say that, whoa, what major truths this guy just said right now. Of course, there's always someone who who says, oh, I get it, man. I kind of want to make that a thing with the Zach and Arby project to always like I'm I'm finding uh, I'm making certain little little rules for myself with every time I write a song. Or, or even do stand up. That uh, one, there, it should always contain a, a, a quote unquote made up word. Like in God Fractal, it says fractally. Uh, that is uh, that is not in the in the lexicon, although it really should be. Um, the, 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 I always try to you know make up a word, um, or you know just you know an adjective form of a word that doesn't have an adjective form or adverb. You know something like that. Um, and another thing I would like to do is always have some stuff in there that I don't know what I'm trying to say. And so there, there is no intention at that all. That is some nonsense, which is yeah. ultimately the god of the fractal. Yes, there's always going to be some some fella or or some damsel who's going to be like, "Oh my god, I totally get it there. I totally get what he means by by the." And then he's going to ask you in the comment section, "What do you mean by that?" Yes, it's uh, that's that's exactly. This is my theory. What? Am I right? And you, you, you don't know what to reply. <laughs> no, I will always, I will always just, I will validate them always. I had a really, I had some really funny uh, YouTube comments this week, and yes, I am still at the point where I read my YouTube comments, but I had really, really funny ones today. Um, it's good to read them because they are people too. Yeah, well, they're humans, and they're, uh, and uh, you know, it's yeah, I, I, once I, we like, share your videos, man. That's the only, uh, you know, really substantive thing that I feel like I have up right now. Uh, no, not the only, but anyway, this this guy comes in, and this was the first time anybody had any negative uh, criticism on there, except uh, except somebody who said he he had good things to say, but then he said like, "Go white nasally, boy." So I was I was called nasally, and that hurt my spirit a little bit. But I am nasally. I'm from Michigan. We are called Michiganders because Abraham Lincoln was making fun of a politician by saying that we honk like geese. Gander, is the geese. Uh, anyway, which makes it easier for you to do the Terence McKenna voice. You are correct. He was one of the more nasally humans in all of existence. But really, what I really enjoy about Terence McKenna talking is uh, there's there's this one talk where he's he's drinking water and he is so clearly just making an effort to be so obnoxious with his gulps. He's <clears throat> And it's like Fane. You hear it. Most obscene. Like, he's just taking ridiculous gulps. And, uh. Like that is yeah. McKenna being hardcore. He was a good nonsense man, man. He was really good at the art of nonsense, man. He did, 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 did not give a single fuck. You know, he was, he was going to tell you about it. I don't know if it's an actual quote, but there was a meme going around that was Terrence McKenna's face and it says, don't talk to me unless you've taken five dried grams in silent darkness. And sometimes I feel that way. <laughs> sometimes I feel like uh, I don't want to, I, I, I refuse to have any kind of philosophical or metaphysical conversation with someone who has not you know, explored the, the realm of psychedelia. Yeah. Because uh, there's just certain things like any like a, like Michu Kaku, the astrophysicist, the guy the guy is as you know has said I think uh, Joe Rogan asked him like or saying have you ever you know tried psychedelics and he was like no I need my brain to be working uh, at its highest function it's like well that has what the fuck does that have to do with anything you should do mushrooms you know um, and he said something you know he, Michu Kaku says that you know he never has and refuses to because he doesn't want to you know 
fuck his brain up. And I understand the concern there. But uh, but if you're an astrophysicist, come on now, come the fuck on now. Your 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 line of work essentially is what people do on accident when they lay in a field and stare at the sky and realize that they love everything. That's not always that way, though. You know what I would really like to get into is uh, is digital shamanism. No, 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 no. Ascism sounds good. We just had very good aurora borealis uh, somewhere on this globe because of the extensive solar flares, my friend. Yes, extensive solar flares. I could feel them in my in my heart chakra. In I could feel them in my mycelium spine. The crystals, use the crystals to enhance your whatever you said. Actually, the, the room that I'm in right now has crystals and stuff. <laughs> yes, put them on your, on your uh, you know, top of the head. It will enlarge something. I don't know what, but it will. Well, I put one, I put one on, on my crown chakra, and it hovers above my head, actually, because the overwhelming indigo light that is emitted from my brain stem... How is the ass chakra called? What? There is a chakra in your asshole. Oh. <laughs> and I am trying to say that you can put a crystal inside there and see what oh. happens. I feel like there's... I know folk who are totally uh, giving themselves fucking crystal suppositories. Yes. Gar- I absolutely guarantee that I'm doing these. I mean, shit, I, I, I used to shove my college gems in my ass. No, I didn't. But now I have to. Let's see. Let's see. And I just forced myself into that. Uh, uh, we just had a terrible snuggle fest in the IRC chat because I posted in there to call in. And uh, the problem is I post in such tremendously wonderful colors that they turn out very strange in some IRCs. And... Uh, <clears throat> And so Jen said, oh, that's all right, just snuggle everyone afterwards. So now there's been about 500 yards of snuggles in there. And and now nobody knows what numbers to call in because they've all been shot up off the screen. But if anyone does want to call in... Uh, hey, you, have you, to, know, you have to explain uh, snuggles to me. Say again? You have to snuggles. explain snuggles. Uh, you yeah. can't explain snuggles, you have to experience them. <laughs> Stuff about things. He did this all on a I know all sorts of things about stuff. I'll find you in the middle of the woods and show you everything I know. In the center of the forest. I can't wait. In the center of the forest. What the bananas? You will know this is me. God damn it! I say to you, you will know. You will. You will experience this. First half. Do, do, do Americans really not know about snuggles, then, Zach? Okay, uh, w- I'm familiar with snogging, a term that was presented to me via Harry Potter, but uh, snuggling, as far as snuggling here, it means cuddling, like just snuggling yeah. with, with your head. Like it's more of when you uh, when you you nuzzle. It's like nuzzling. It's many words that have that have uh, the type of variants of cuddle, snuggle. Generally, it starts with snuggles and it ends up with snogs, yeah. Yeah. So, snuggling is when it has, there is, the, it's, it's, it's always, it's for sexual purposes. Because cuddling sometimes can be completely platonic. I've, I've cuddled with people that I did not fuck. <laughs> I've also, I've, also I've, I've cuddled with people when we were, in fact, fucking each other. And then, uh, and that was part of the, of the fucking each other agreement. Is part of the, the the contract of the king was uh, was that we we snuggled and cuddled. But but the terrible thing is, all these snuggles meant that we still haven't given out the numbers for people to call in uh, and I talk have. nonsense. No. Uh, well, in there you have, but not out live on the radio oh, by right. saying well. uh, by saying if you want to talk some nonsense with Zach Winchester, dial uh, plus four four one six one two nine eight. O two nine eight, or add Bob's backyard in Skype and give it a bell like that. Does that work? Hmm. 
Yeah. You said something that was kind of rhythmic there for a second. If you want to talk some nonsense, you got to get called in the show. Come and talk some nonsense. Everyone must know what I have found in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the woods. <laughs> in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the night. Boom. Do the dubstep. There you are. I'm seeing again. Westboro Baptist Church has announced plans to picket Slayer guitarist Jeff Hanneman's funeral. What? To go there and say God that's hates facts? That's so awesome. Because that's uh, there's going to be Slayer fans to, to, like, oh, that could be beautiful. Who will kill the Westboro people. I think that would be that. See, like, I don't wish harm upon people usually. And I think that Westboro Baptist Church do a great thing for humanity. I think that they, I think they, they boost our evolution. They bring by happiness in into case. people's minds because of the laughing when they see them on YouTube yes, they, they make the whole they make the whole thing look silly and I think that they they turn a lot of people away from homophobia and old thinking because they see these idiots like I wouldn't even call them necessarily idiot that, that Shirley Phelps is she's a very well spoken lady and sometimes she keeps her composure better than the people who are who are actually getting angry with her. She doesn't seem to get angry as much as just uh as just, just you know hateful with poise like uh and then they they but they're serious i know I, i used to think they were trolls for the longest time but then i i saw what, what they they uh excommunicated their daughter uh, because that's, she uh, wasn't trying to be about that life let's try to get her to the radio and make her believe that we're actually going to do a serious interview with her and actually do a serious interview until the half of the show or something when you will make a lot of irony stuff and satire. I'd love to talk to her. That'd be lovely. I'd love to fuck the living yelping dingoes out of her, too. Just for, for novelty purposes. She's not that attractive, but I would fuck the crying raccoons out of the daughter of Shirley Phelps. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. The, the, the amount of, I would, I would want to film it. One, another thing that I've never really had any interest in, I didn't want any any footage of myself, you know, in the act of fuckery. But my God, I would release that. I would, I would sit my family down to watch me fucking the daughter of Shirley Phelps. Oh, my Lord. The, she has many daughters. Which daughter are you talking about? I don't know if it's, if it's Shirley's daughter, but it's uh, one of the, one, the... Somebody who is of that family, she... Uh, she... she uh, well, let's look it up. Westboro... Girl excommunicated. She's uh, and she's 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 fuckable by all means. She's uh, yep, there she is. She is. Her name is Lauren Drain. Lauren Drain. I wonder if she changed her last name. Lauren Drain. <laughs> Duh. WC member Lauren Drain takes a stand for marriage equality. That's, see, that's fucking awesome, see. That's like a whole thing that's happening here in America, and, and uh, you know, the, the more observant folk amongst us clearly realize that it's, uh, it's a distraction technique. I don't think there's any doubt in any intelligent person's mind that we will have marriage equality here and, and elsewhere, because the religion thing, as much as it's hanging on for dear life, it is, it is, uh, it is a slipping tree sloth that will soon be falling to its... To its death. I definitely... I don't see that carrying on for another century. I Can you imagine fucking Shirley Phelps, though? You know what? I have to be completely honest. This It's shallow for me to say. She is not uh, amongst the... If you were forced to fuck her. No, she's... I do not want... My... my My brain, nor dick, nor heart wants nothing to do with... Okay, my heart, nor... My heart and dick want She things... She has a skeleton to, face. My brain, my brain and my demons want to just storm her fortress. Are you talking about consensual sex? Are you talking about, like, I got Shirley Phelps alone, and, uh... Because I'm not talking about... about uh, no, we're talking about instantly talk finding yourself... In the situation and the scene of having sex with Shirley Phelps. Garbage out of Shirley Phelps, because then I, I would upload that footage and I would show the whole world. 
I would, oh my lord, absolutely, in a second. I would, I would put all enjoyment aside. I would pop four Viagra and eat a bunch of watermelon. Did you know that water, Viagra is essentially watermelon? Watermelon. Stuff, the stuff that's in Cialis and extends in Viagra, it's, it's, it's the watermelon. Watermelon, yeah. It, it increases your blood flow and makes it easier to maintain an erection when you're fucking Shirley Phelps. <laughs> so. Which I imagine could be quite that difficult. Would be difficult, yes. Yeah. So yeah. if I eat two watermelons. You may fuck, you can fuck two members of the Phelps family. Hell yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, no, I saw the whole special about the, the daughter and she just. And she says she still loves her family and wants. She definitely wants to uh, to uh, to interact with her with her siblings. But even her siblings have been turned against her, and she's just not allowed to be part of the family anymore. Hmm. And I think people see that. Any sane, moral person sees that and thinks, "Whoa, this is stupid. Is that what we do? Is that where we go on Sundays? We're part of something that is even slightly like that." I don't want to anymore, or at least that's I. I, I think yeah. I think they pull away from from uh, from monotheism. I'm not against religion. I'm just uh, thank I'm, God for dead soldiers. God yeah. hates America. God hates fag. In what's this enablers? Yeah, I really think about like uh, uh, w- Christopher Hitchens makes the he. I think he's he's my favorite militant atheist. And some people don't have a favorite militant atheist. I'm not. Uh, I'm not into militant anything, really. I'm not into to evangelizing. You now, yeah, everyone should come to their own conclusions. But with but Christopher Hitchens makes really good points about like we should all we all it is our moral obligation to to uh, to we have we have to mock this. We have to 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 argue it at ev- at every opportunity. We have to destroy this this cancer on human thought evolution. This is hurting us. This is hurting people right now. You know, he, he just he makes really good points for for why this is a, the the bane of humanity. And uh, and if if you if you understand why it's malarkey and you're not out there making the case for it, then he he opines that you're being a coward. And uh, that's certainly not how I feel. But he makes great points for it. And when somebody makes a great point about a thing that is. Uh, that is, uh, you know, against what I, uh, I, I think. I think. I think Christopher Hitchens is a person worth listening to, no matter how much you may disagree with him, because he is just he's he's full he's full of facts and rhetoric. He has both facts and rhetoric. He he also supported the Iraq War, whilst being you know really anti-Bush, but he you know he supported that he thought we he thought that was a good the, the right thing to do at that moment. We have so, someone called Sarah in the call. Good evening. All right. What do you Are you, you right? You want to say something to the Zach? Hello, Zach. Hello. You're a bit muffled then. I couldn't hear you probably. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, am I less muffled now? Yeah, yeah, you're clear now. Hello. Where are you coming from? England, from Sheffield. That's what? What about you? I'm uh, near Detroit. All right. Cool. Are you going to be on the radio tonight? We are on the radio right now. Welcome. Yeah. All right, we are, aren't we? It's the nonsense. Ah, uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the nonsense. Thank you. Welcome you. to the nonsense. I thought I was just getting pulled into a call then. That's why Welcome I was like... the oh. nonsense. You, you can summon the nonsense question. It can be done. Okay, well, what are you talking about? Nonsense. In nonsense. Fact, oh. Okay. You, you, you decide. You must direct the nonsense in any direction, please. Direct it now. Parties. <laughs> Parties? Yeah. Parties. <laughs> at a party last night at Did this fine in this fine municipality of East Lansing, Michigan, and there were lots of, of, of uh, drink drug abusers. I abused the drink drugs last night. I got sternly wasted. I got abundantly drunk last night 
and spun fire without any without any safety provisions whilst drunk uh, in the street um, and slept in my car and went to a place in the morning where they play the dot as they cook large omelets with artichokes and spinach and asparagus and all sorts. It was probably the best fucking omelet of my life. Do you enjoy omelets? Yeah, I like omelets. I like them um, with potatoes in, like, Spanish omelets as well. And tuna fish. I like tuna omelets with garlic and onions and cheese. <laughs> but I like parties. I like parties better than omelets. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> Category, yeah. I feel like if it would have it, like the greater than, less than, part or omelets. I feel like most people do. Let's over. But let me ask, your name escaped me. What, 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 what is your name again, Magical Turtle? Sarah. Sarah, what about an omelet party? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. That'd be good. As long as there's other bits of food there as well, because there's only so much as a certain amount of omelet you can eat in one night, isn't there? It, it is very true. It is a very full meal. But I, I don't think I properly explained what happens at the omelet party. What happens is uh, there is one person who sacrifices their life and blood, uh, cuts themselves open, and then begins begins uh, cascading their hemoglobin all over a crowd of, of naked people who are on meth and ketamine. And then we essentially have a massive slayer... Mo-